In nature, the mother will change the egg's position many times a day. This behavior is part of natural mothering, or brooding behavior as we call it. The embryo develops rapidly inside the egg once incubation begins. After 12 to 13 hours, the primitive streak appears. This is the embryo as it first begins to grow. After 21 to 24 hours, the nodicord begins to form which will become the chick's spine. After 4 days, the allantois is visible. This structure is needed as a place for waste material to collect. Also at this time, the blood supply to the yolk sac is developing, needed for circulating oxygen. After 11 days, the embryo becomes surrounded by the amniotic sac which protects the embryo. Eggs are taken out of the incubator after 18 days so they can be transferred into hatching trays and placed in the hatcher. Remember, the incubator and hatcher are different chambers with different environments. The incubator trays are removed from the trolley and placed onto the machine. The eggs on the tray are candled with a light and a computer identifies those eggs that are infertile by measuring how much light passes through the egg. Eggs which have a high amount of light passing through them are infertile. These eggs are picked up by suction cups and discarded. This allows for more room in the hatching tray for chicks to hatch. Next, the remaining eggs are lifted and placed into a hatching tray. Soiled eggs can harbor bacteria, which enter into the shell when the eggs cool. These microbes give off gas so pressure inside the shell increases. Under the right conditions, these eggs may explode, causing the bacteria-infested contents to contaminate the rest of the chicks in the hatching trays. The trays are stacked on a trolley and put into the hatcher. Eggs remain in the hatcher for three to three and a half days, long enough for the chicks to hatch out of their shells. Like in the incubators, temperature and humidity are strictly controlled to ensure optimal conditions for the hatching chicks. Temperature in the hatcher is the same as the incubator. After approximately three days, trays of chicks are pulled out of the hatcher. Timing is crucial. The basket must be pulled when most of the chicks hatch. As you can see, this basket is not ready yet. Baskets must be pulled in a timely fashion before the hatched chicks become dehydrated. This basket is ready to be pulled and the chicks processed. Hatch time varies depending on the parent flock age, storage time, egg size, and hatcher conditions. Slower hatching flocks are pulled last. Rising carbon dioxide and decreasing oxygen concentrations signal the chick to begin pipping through the shell. The chick has to first reach its air cell which is called internal pipping. This is when the chick takes its first breath. The egg can't hold much air, so the chick will then have to break through the shell which is called external pipping. Chicks turn around inside the egg to crack the shell all the way around. Once other chicks hear pipping, they start to come out of their shells too. A chick that breaks the shell after one rotation will leave a straight crack, which is good. These chicks tend to be stronger and healthier. A badly pipped shell is jagged. The chick probably had a harder time getting out of the shell and took more than one rotation, which takes more energy. Removed baskets of chicks are transported from the hatcher to a separator room. The baskets contain chicks and eggshells which need to be separated before the chicks can be further processed. This helps keep the chicks clean and healthy. A machine gently separates the chicks from the hatch residue, which includes shells and unhatched eggs. Shells are collected in a hopper and are sent for rendering. Unhatched eggs and call chicks are humanely euthanized. Chicks are transported by conveyor belt to the processing room and onto a grading table. Hatching trays are cleaned for reuse. This process is highly efficient because the machine and belts eliminate the need to handle each chick. The area where the chicks are separated from the shells is separate from the processing room for biosecurity reasons. 
separation, and cleanliness help to keep the chicks healthy. Chicks are visually inspected by workers for navel, down, physical, and nutritional abnormalities. Calls are separated and placed into baskets while good chicks continue on the conveyor belt to be counted. Chicks are called for a variety of reasons that would prevent their success in a barn, including unhealed navels, poor down, malformations, and nutritional disorders. Healthy birds produce healthy, safe meat products in the long run. Chicks are automatically counted into groups of 100 and placed in plastic boxes. Imagine how long it would take one person to count this many chicks by hand. The boxes are sprayed with a fine mist to vaccinate for certain diseases. The spray lands on the chicks down. The size of the droplets is important for proper coverage of the vaccine. Then the chicks will actually swallow the vaccine as they're grooming or preening themselves, or other chicks. Depending on their destination, the chicks will sometimes have other things done. Birds that require further processing are put on a chick processing table known as a wheel. Birds are vaccinated, beak trimmed, and toe trimmed on this wheel. Some vaccines are delivered through needle, directly below the loose skin of the neck. When the males and females need to be separated, most of the time, hatchery personnel differentiate sexes in some genetic strains by examining their wing feathers. This method has been used for many years. The females grow their wing feathers faster than the males, so their wing feathers appear longer. This is an example of sex-linked genes being put to use. Keeping everything clean is very important in maintaining the chick's health. HACCP, or Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, is a program to promote food safety and keeping the industry healthy. Equipment and facilities must be cleaned each day to maximize cleanliness. Biosecurity is maintained all over the hatching facility. This includes hand washing, clothing change, footwear change, and healthy workers. Outside conditions can spell trouble for young chicks and poults. In nature, newly hatched birds are sheltered from the elements by their parents and by a nest. In the same way, the truck that delivers chicks to producers maintains a specific temperature to ensure that chicks survive the trip especially during cold winter and hot summer days. The truck is outfitted with a power generator to maintain ventilation. For longer trips, chicks are given hatch supplement in the form of a gel puck which contains essential nutrients. With all the activity so soon after hatching, the chicks benefit from eating this source of moisture and food. Chicks are now ready to be delivered to farms, whether it is to laying hen farms that will produce eggs for grocery stores, broiler farms that will produce meat, or to breeder farms to become parents to the rest of the industry. In the case of turkeys, poults will become either breeders or commercial turkeys raised for meat. On a typical day at the hatchery, 100,000 chicks can be hatched and processed and sent out to farms. Though you may not often think about it or see it in action, the hatchery is a very important step in the production of all poultry products.